Hi my loves, it's Ra. Welcome back to my channel. So I have part two of the video that I did with an inmate who was awarded parole after 23 years. He actually had a life sentence and went up for parole every few years because he was in the military and in federal prison. There are three different types of inmates that got parole and that's it. It's military inmates, DC inmates, and old law inmates. And I, I go through that more in part one of the video that I did with Daryl when he first was awarded this parole. So if you are interested in a question and answer, I polled my audience. I took the questions that you guys posted on the first video and I just went through them and I asked him on this call. He also said he's willing to do a part three next week. So as questions come up from this, just throw them in the comments below and we will continue to answer your questions. This is helping you guys. This is helping me because hopefully one day that's going to be Adam that's right behind him. So this is Adam's best friend, Daryl. They haven't been together in a while. They separated about probably 10 maybe a little longer, 10 or 12 years ago. And I stayed in touch with him because he's like a brother-in-law to me. So if you're interested, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the author of a book called The Comeback Code, the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families. I've been using my experiences to coach prison wives and family members since 2009. We don't glorify or glamorize prison life here or prison wife life here. We're making the best of a crummy situation. We're finding the silver lining and we're figuring out how to do this one shot deal. I will help you be the best version of you while you're on this painful journey. So without wasting any more time, let's just get right into it. He called. I was running late tonight. My hair wasn't done. My makeup was half done. I was setting up the camera, thank God, and I heard the phone vibrating on the shelf. So I just kind of threw it on the tripod really quick. We had a little bit of a conversation before I got the camera going and the microphone on and started. So he was talking a little bit about how he's in freak out mode. And I asked, are you in freak out mode because of this video? Because the first time I asked him, are you ready to be YouTube famous? And he's like, ah! YouTube wasn't even around until probably a decade after he got incarcerated. So he's just learning. He doesn't have any experience with social media. He doesn't have an ex any experience with iPhones or smartphones or anything like that. So that's what I thought he was talking about. But he said, as the weeks are progressing, it's getting more and more real to him and it's getting more and more scary. And he addresses that. That's the last question I ask him. So he addresses that more at the end of the call. But if you'd like for him to elaborate more or on anything else, if more questions come up, just post them in the comments below. Okay. So I posted the video that you and I did the first one the other day. You got so much love, so many compliments. People are so excited for you. You have so many people in your corner. Yeah, of course. We got a lot of fans for you on YouTube. We had one girl who said you're cute and asked if you were single because I posted a picture of I posted a picture of you and Adam from Allenwood. So um, oh, yeah. you have admirers uh, already. Okay. So anyway, so they posted some questions. So I figured we could just go through them and I'll ask you what I got. Okay. Okay. So somebody said, we'll start with the simple ones. What meal do you want first? Oh my goodness. I think I want, I think I want steak. Oh, so yeah. Long. It's been so long since I've had steak, so yeah. I'm going to go with that. Steak is a great one. Okay, what do you think yeah. will be the hardest thing in the free world to get readjusted to after all this time? Oh, my goodness. Probably the technology, I would say. That's my fear for Adam, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I'm a voracious reader, so what little you can learn from that through magazines and media and whatnot, but it's just a different whole different animal being able to, you know, put it in your hands and function with it. Yeah. So. I'll help you with whatever. Yeah. There's this thing called FaceTime where it's like a video visit, right phone to phone. Yeah. So you just call me anytime and I'll talk you through it. We just have to teach you how to do that first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. And then I think, I think being, being around, I guess letting my guard down and being around, you know, just normal people out there in society, that's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, it is. You know, my, my friends and family here are more like myself, but other than that, I'm guarded. So that's going to be at, at the, something that I'm going to have to look forward to as well. I think it's great that you acknowledge that because a lot of people are in denial of that, and I think it's a huge help to acknowledge it so you can work through it kind of quickly. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm going to read this woman's whole comment. She said, what an inspiring story and one that proves to never give up hope. 
Daryl sounds almost like Adam in the way by his mindset and always continuing his education from within. It's no wonder they became best friends. Like-minded people attract liked people. For part two of this video, I'd like to know, since it's been a couple of months now from his first interview with you and getting closer to his parole date, do you have any new definitive plans for your release? Well, first I'm going to have to try to find a job that's, that I'm, I'm releasing to the Warren County Regional Jail, which is about, which is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, for those that don't know where that's at, Western Kentucky University in southwestern Kentucky. But I'll be living about an hour east of there. So I'm going to try to secure a job that's at a midpoint between the two because of the commute times, you know, aren't going to be practical getting a job in Bowling Green. And then when they release me to home confinement, I'd have to commute back and forth. It's just not feasible. So securing a job, and then I got accepted into an MBA program. So I want to hit the ground running with that. I think I'm still going to stay with the correspondence because I think that's going to open some doors for me for the future. So it's pretty much finding, I guess, a viable job that, that, that's going to work best for me. I don't, I don't know if that's a generic answer or not. No, I think it's perfect. I think, I mean, if that's what a lot of people experience and it's generic, then that's the truth. And that's something that I think on the outside we need to work for to help with reentry and stuff. So a lot of times we hear stories out here, especially from the women who've done time, that once an inmate hears that somebody else gets parole, they try to mess with them and ruin it. Have you experienced anything like that? No, but uh, I can tell you I've heard uh, two different stories. One, a guy who had a similar sentence is mine, similar to confining offenses, did a lot of time. He got out. He was on a pretty lengthy duration for parole. And from what I understand, his parole officer is great. Very reasonable. Uh, not too many restrictions. Uh, but then there's another guy who, who did, I think, 13 years. He got out, and he had a horrible one. She just breathed down his neck any anytime she could. Uh, he seems to think that at the early stage of him getting out, she had asked him to go and dress uh, some kids at school. And he said that I'd, he'd be more than willing to do that, but he wanted to focus on himself first because he'd been at, he had been away from society for 13 years. He wanted to get more solid footing underneath himself before he did that. And, and, and if she didn't mind, if he could do that at a later date. Well, he can't prove this, but he thinks that she held that against him. And, and uh, I guess she was just horrible. He violated, he's a, uh, he's a bodybuilder. So I guess he violated a little steroids. And as opposed to getting some type of other sanction, he chose to just come back to prison to kill his paper just to avoid being on her docket. That sucks. So that's a pretty, yeah, that's a pretty bad scenario there. Yeah, that sucks. And I think that's probably more common. You can, go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, you can only go off of what you're being told. So you don't know the context and you're not there. So, but those are the two that, that uh, come to my mind. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, that completely uh, answered the question. Yeah. Besides for the day that you heard that you were awarded parole, what was your second best day in prison? My second best day in prison? Yeah, because this person is just assuming your first best day in prison was the day you were awarded parole. So she wants to know what other was your best day in prison? I would say... I would say probably receiving my diploma for my bachelor's degree. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It, despite what they may portray, the BOP is not as uh, proactive with education and they don't facilitate it like they should. So it, it was a, quite a difficult journey for me. Yeah. You know, the academic portion of it was the easier part. Yeah. You know, just having, getting staff to, you know, Call, make calls for you or to do their job was quite daunting to say the least. Yeah. This is a long one. It says, how did you meet Adam? Like in prison, since it's an every man for himself arena, how do you find that kind of close friend? Are you able to maintain contact with each other and are you allowed to visit him once you're free? Well, to answer the second part first, I don't know. I think I may have to get special permission from my parole officer, but I don't think that would be a problem. The guy that I referenced earlier about his restrictions, his PO was great with that. So if I get a PO that's similar, uh, I would be able to do that. So the first one, I think Adam and I became good friends because I got recruited to teach some recreation classes 
and Adam was already teaching some others. And Adam's in incredible, incredible, phenomenal shape. And I'm a fitness junkie as well. So it was kind of, I guess our, our friendship started off a mutual respect for our fitness. And then from there, it just blossomed, you know, same mindset about life, about politics. And then it just took off from there. And he's like a brother to me, you know. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Do you desire to have a wife or a family in the future? Here's your chance. Yes. Plug yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do desire to have a wife, uh, you know, as long as we're both compatible. And I think she's out there. That's a very cheesy answer because you just put the spotlight on me. So I lost, I lost my words. I'm going to blame you for that. Um, it's okay. <laughs> she is out there, and that's not cheesy at all. I mean, there's somebody for everybody, I think. And we need somebody because we have to double date. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> to go, go to. That's right. Oh, here's a good one. What's the number one thing you really want to achieve, achieve after you come home? I'm so tongue-tied today. I'm sorry. The number one thing I want to achieve after I come home. Hmm, that's a tough one. I would say, I would say finish, I would say finish my MBA, you know, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm working full-time. It's huge. You know, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a challenge. I understand that, but uh, I'm gearing myself up for it. And I think it's gonna I think it's gonna pay dividends in the long run. I mean, you're so brilliant. I think that that will be easily not easily. I don't want to take away the work you're gonna have to do, but I think that'll be a goal you'll achieve. Yeah, and, and, and on a side note, I still want to find an avenue to do something similar to what you're doing as far as helping people. I wanna I wanna be that individual who can be a sounding board or lead by example or show people that, you know, on their worst day or no matter how hard you fall, it's about getting up and then you can, you can move forward after a tragedy. Uh, well, you're welcome aboard anytime you're ready. <laughs> how long do you have to do in the halfway house? I don't know. Uh, worst case scenario, it's four months. Uh, but from what I'm understanding, my if, if there's any truth to it, my case manager told me that he thinks I'm only going to have to do, uh, be there for two weeks. Oh. I've had other, yeah, I've had other people who have told me, uh, a friend of mine who was military, he said that uh, pretty much along the same lines because I'm going to be going on. Let's call it from a federal prison. And what I'm understanding is you've got to, uh, you're, you live, where you're going to be living is stable and is a good environment to live and you've got a job that expedites when you Go on home confinement. That's awesome. Can you talk to me really quick? Because I know we only have a few seconds left about how you were telling me before you're kind of freaking out. Yeah, I was, I'm just you know it's a it's a new page. I don't know what's in store for me. It's all it's all visualization, perception, and secondhand information. So and I think we all fear the unknown. So that's mostly what that is. And just you know because I've been away so long, it's uh, it's hard to process. Yeah, it's going to be an adjustment, but we're all here fighting for you and pulling for you, and this is what you've been fighting for for 23 years. So one day at a time, one step at a time, and it's going to be amazing. And you have so many of us out here to support you. So what do you think? Maybe like a part three when you get out yeah. out of the halfway house? or oh, oh, you, you, We can do part three next week if, if you want. That works for me. Are you gone? I love to say, are you gone? <laughs> You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being over. Daryl, of course, is a huge step closer and Adam and I hopefully are right behind him too. Lots of love from my heart, Adam's heart, and Daryl's heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. You'll have to excuse me, they have this big exhaust fan back behind me, so it's not that my not that I need hearing aids or anything. <laughs> it's probably my awful accent too. Let's be real. No.